Hi everyone, welcome back for another energy update video. It's the end of January. It's time to give you an update of how we've been getting on in one of the worst months of the year. I say that, beautiful sunshine out today in Norfolk. So we're having a great start to February. But yeah, it's the end of January, which means we've got through December and we've got through January, the two months that are the worst on solar generation and the worst typically for heating as well. So in February, we should find there's more solar, even if it's freezing cold, it should be able to heat the house using our electric air to air heating system a lot easier on just renewable energy. So things are gonna get easier, more economical, less grid use going forward. But we've survived, we've survived both December and January. And amazingly, uh, we haven't used any peak rate grid energy. So our tariff with Octopus Energy is seven and a half pence a kilowatt hour off peak. And that's when we charge the battery, charge the car, heat the hot water. We do all those things to boost in the morning to use just cheap rate energy. And then that leaves less energy to use during the day and just use the battery during the day and what solar comes through and the battery overnight. And we haven't run out of battery. So we've continued to use just cheap rate energy. The 40 pence a kilowatt hour peak rate haven't touched at all, apart from the couple of kilowatt hours just balancing the grid. So yeah, December and January have been fantastic really. And January specifically has felt different because I think I've got used to the heating system a lot more, got used to the capacity of the battery a bit more, we've used it some more. The house has felt just so much better. It's difficult to convey in the statistics, but um, the heating system especially is just working out so well for us and is such good value. So we spent just over five and a half thousand pounds for our air to air heating system. And we sit there in the evening when it's like minus two outside and it just feels like a warm day inside. It just feels comfortable. It doesn't feel like there's any heating on. And that, that's a really wonderful feeling. It feels natural, it feels comfortable. And that's what we really, really like about the system. And it really has worked well for us, the fact that we can turn the system on and off when we want and it reacts quickly and efficiently as well. Now that suits us because we don't follow what some of the so-called experts and installers tell you that leave your heating system on 24 hours a day, um, heat every single room. There's no point in turning rooms off. We, we do the opposite to that. We do have several rooms that we don't actually heat and have heating on. This kitchen is one of them. There's actually no heating on at the moment. It's five degrees outside. It's a little bit sunny, so I'm quite warm. I'm sat here in a t-shirt. We really don't need the heating in this room. Uh, we do have a portable heater in here so that if it's freezing cold and we want to stay in here for any reason, we can heat the room, but we don't have the radiator on. We don't use the oil heating system anymore. But that's working really well, being flexible, being able to turn the heating on in the morning, boost the temperature, then turn it off. We'll go for a walk typically, come back late morning towards lunch, cook lunch, and then the heating can go back on again. And then the heating goes off for the evening so we don't have the heating run throughout the night. That way we really are saving a lot of kilowatt hours um, and hence we're not running out of battery. So that, that's working so, so well for us. And I hope that you can see that detail in the statistics when we go through them. But overall, January was a bit of a glum start, I think. Uh, it wasn't a very good start to January and that it looked like we we're gonna have one of the worst solar powered Januaries we've had so far in the last four years. But then in the last two weeks, it perked up quite a lot and we had quite a lot of solar generation, had quite a few really bright sunny days like today. So the stats have improved um, towards the end of the month. But having looked through some of the stats for the month, there's quite a few things in there that have been really interesting for me to look at. And I can't wait to share that detail with you because that's what I do. End of the month, I print out the stats, look at the monthly values, look at the trends, look at the variances, look at what's going on and try and understand it, try and learn from the data. What's been going on? Why has it been going on? And uh, there's a couple of good things to have a look at to do with hot water and heating. Anyway, less of me talking, let's get into the stats. So let's talk about how much we've imported from the grid from Octopus Energy. And that's 525 kilowatt hours for £52.62 and 7.79 pence on average per kilowatt hour, compared to £105 if we'd have been on the Agile product. 
So how does that compare to last month? Well, £597.71 versus £525. We're 72 kilowatt hours to the better in January than last month. And we've spent £10 less as well. Last month in December, it was £62. This month, it's £52. But look at Agile, £179.65 in December and only the £105 this month. So Agile is looking cheaper as well. Comparing to last January, though, 437 kilowatt hours last year, 525 kilowatt hours this year. Again, we're charging an electric car, so that's using more energy. We spent £41 last year, 52.62 this year. So it's costing us £11 more. But the tariff's gone up, hasn't it? It's gone up a lot with Octopus Energy. And yet, look at this. The average price per kilowatt hour, 7.79 pence. Last year was only 7.69 pence. So we've kept the average price really low. And that's because we're using the bigger battery and using mostly, in fact, nearly all, probably 98, 99% cheap rate energy on Octopus Go. And again, that comparison to the Agile tariff, if we'd have been on Agile last January, it would have been £139. So the reason I'm going on about Agile is because the £105, that's for this January, if we'd have been on the Agile tariff, is the lowest Agile has looked for quite a while. So it's looking to me like Agile is starting to look cheaper. So sometime over 2023, my prediction is Agile is going to be the tariff to be on again, perhaps. On to solar generation then, 273.6 kilowatt hours in total for our three arrays. As you can see from the chart here, the first two weeks, not so good, but the second two weeks made up for it, and we had quite a few days there where we're generating above 10 kilowatt hours. So 273.6 in total for January. The breakdown of that 273 kilowatt hours was 87.1 kilowatt hours was our 2.4 kilowatt solar edge array. Our 3.9 kilowatt Solus Array was peaking around 13 kilowatt hours on an individual day and totaled 145.5 kilowatt hours. And lastly, the other Solus Array with the gable panels pointing east and the few garage panels pointing south, just 41 kilowatt hours, but it all helps, doesn't it? Added together, that's the 273 kilowatt hours. This is the January comparison, and you can see that really this January, very, very similar to 2020, but not as good as last year. Of that solar energy that we generated, we exported 12.4 kilowatt hours. And as you can see from this graph, it's the yellow spikes underneath the green spikes and the red spikes. You can hardly see them. It really isn't a lot at all. So yeah, on this chart, the 12 kilowatt hours, it's right down the bottom as we would normally expect in the winter period. We're trying to use as much as we can and not give it away for free. Now the interesting bit, we know what we've generated, we know what we've imported, but how did we use that energy? Where did it get spent? 104.3 kilowatt hours went into the eddy for heating our hot water, quite similar to last month. In December, I think it was 101 kilowatt hours. But last January, a year ago, 186. So again, you can see this Mixergy tank is really helping us keep our hot water energy usage down in the winter period. Lots of energy went through the My Energy Zappy device to charge up our Golf Electric and Mini Electric, 214.9 kilowatt hours compared to last year, which was absolutely nothing, zero. We didn't have an electric car last January. That leaves house usage then, 523 kilowatt hours for January, which compares really well to last month, which was 582. And last January was 585. So, yep, this January we're a good 60 kilowatt hours down. This is the breakdown for everything else we monitor. 3 kilowatt hours for the cloakroom radiator. Air fryer, 6 kilowatt hours. Microwave was 10 kilowatt hours. The bathroom radiator, 8 kilowatt hours. Eco air dehumidifier, that's the one we use for laundry, 14 kilowatt hours. The ensuite radiator, 16 kilowatt hours. Dehumidifier in our bedroom that we also use for laundry, 16 kilowatt hours. The one that amazes me, TV. We watch a lot of television, 20 kilowatt hours. The oven and hob, just 22 kilowatt hours. Then onto the eddy, the hot water we've already talked about. That was about 104 kilowatt hours in total. 38 were from the grid. And then looking a few lines up, 66 kilowatt hours from solar. That's a good sign that we're getting more solar. Zappy the same, 46 kilowatt hours from solar. And 169 kilowatt hours from the grid for the Zappy car charging. That leaves the Toshiba Aircon, 158 kilowatt hours for our heating. 
So how does that compare to last month? Well, if you look at the numbers here, um, we've used a little bit more energy for the microwave, but most things are quite similar until you look at the radiators. We've used less energy for the cloakroom and the bathroom radiator this month. So it looks like it's been slightly warmer and we haven't needed the heat as much. And if you look at the top one, the light blue colored last month, it was 196 kilowatt hours. This month only 158. So yeah, heating wise, it has actually been better this month. The other thing that's noticeable, Eddy solar kilowatt hours. This month is 66 kilowatt hours. Last month, this is the brown one near the top. It was 44. So you can see that there is more solar. That's the big difference, really. Now onto one of the anomalies. This charts from the Mixergy app for our hot water. And as you can see right at the bottom, in January we used 2,285 litres. Very similar to November, but 400 litres less than we used in December. But in December we used 101 kilowatt hours to produce that hot water. And in January we used 104 kilowatt hours. So very similar energy consumption, but 400 litres less hot water. So why is that? Why, why are we using less hot water but it's costing us the same amount of kilowatt hours to produce? Well, as I've mentioned, if you look at the Eddy solar kilowatt hours, you can see towards the end of January, it definitely looks like we're putting more energy in to hot water during the day rather than first thing in the morning. So maybe the timing's having an influence. Looking at the grid use for the eddy, heating the hot water in the morning, you definitely see that we've changed strategy, probably from around the 10th, 12th of January, something like that. We're only heating it for quarter of an hour instead of half an hour first thing in the morning. But I think this is the telling chart that probably explains it, and I'm not 100% sure, but I think this will be the case. Current charge is showing us how full our hot water is, and you can see in December where the average is. The average is a lot higher on we had more hot water in the tank, and because we had more hot water in the tank, we would have had more losses. So if we had more losses, that would look like we used more energy. So I think we're heating a similar amount of water, maybe even a little bit more hot water in January, but we had less losses. So it looked like we used less hot water, even though we'd heated the same amount. That's my theory anyway. What do you think? Why do you think I've got the same kilowatt hour usage in January and December, but used 400 litres wrong? Perhaps it's just the mixergy stats are wrong. Who knows? On to heating next, well, temperatures. So I'm really interested in watching temperatures because it shows how effective our heating system is. Now, this chart is showing the purple line at the bottom. It's as close to the outside temperature as we can see. It's the monitor I've got in our loft. And the bottom there is showing minus three, minus four degrees in the peak. We had a week of a cold snap in December and a week of a cold snap in January. You can really see those quite clearly. But the temperature indoors stayed reasonably static. That there isn't a dip that correlates to it. There is a little bit more in December than January, so it looked like the temperatures followed the outside temperature a little bit more in December than January, but pretty much it's flat, so the heating system worked really well with the amount we were actually using it. But the interesting bit to look at are rooms that were not heating or not heating as much. So the kitchen in orange and the bathroom in the yellowy green, those are showing rooms that were not heating as much. And how did they respond to those cold snaps in December and January? January looks like we coped quite well and it's quite flat, not a lot of difference. Yes, the temperature values are lower than they are in the rooms that we heated, obviously. But in December, there, there was a bit of a pronounced dip there. So it looks like whatever I was doing in January, we did it better. So I need to learn from that, don't I? I need to learn to use the heating a bit more when we have the temperatures down to zero and minus five, etc. Those sort of temperatures need me to have more heating on for longer. Because that cold dip in December... That's probably not what I'm looking for. What I'm probably looking for is more what we achieved in January, a less pronounced dip. So this is the last chart. It's from Victron showing our battery usage. The blue area at the top is showing how much of the battery we're using. When the blue line goes right to the very top, that's us at 100%. When it goes right down to the bottom, which it doesn't at all, that would be zero. That would be empty. So how much of the battery are we using? There's three occasions at the top there. You can see we didn't fill to 100%. Other than that, we're charging it to full every single night on cheap rate energy from Octopus. And the lowest we went was down to 38%. So there are, what, six days there where we went into the 40s and just a couple of days where we went into the high 30s. Leaving 10% depth of discharge um, to protect the battery, that's 28% usable battery that we haven't actually used 
even though we've been heating adequately. So there's more, there's more comfort. We could use it a little bit more if we wanted to without running out of battery. So it's working really well. We're not using peak rate energy and this usage is showing that I've got some more capacity. I can use it a little bit more. I hope you found that useful and of course don't forget to comment below and let me know how you got on for the month and what you're planning to do with your solar and battery systems. Uh, for me, I, I have a bit of a confession. Although I'm slightly addicted to CASA smart plugs to have an energy monitoring plug on just about every device, I'm starting to be addicted to these. Lumri smart uh, lights, so floodlights for outside. And I mentioned it in a video before that uh, I wanted to convert some of our static floodlights on the outside of the house and in the garden to be these Wi-Fi controlled ones so I can dim them down, have them on a scene, slightly different colours. Um, they're just more flexible. So I, the fact that the Wi-Fi controlled and Alexa controlled, sorry I shouldn't say that word should I, um, the fact that they're controlled by her then it's been really, really handy in the garden to have these different lights in different angles and different colours and different brightnesses all coming on. It's, it sounds complicated, but it's, it's worked out so well that I'm actually upgrading to these larger ones. So I've been in contact with Lumri Smart and uh, they've provided a couple of these 30 watt um, larger, more, more powerful floodlights. So I'm going to swap out some of the smaller ones and put the larger ones in instead. They're not going to be any brighter because I'll have the dimness down. So the great thing about the more powerful one, it's more powerful when you want it, but it can still be less bright. It can still be quite uh, sociable, shall we say, to our neighbours by dimming it down when we don't need them on full blast. But uh, why mention that and the fact that I'm getting addicted to them is because I'm getting close to 20,000 subscribers this year. We're at 16,500 now. So sometime this year, I think we'll break 20,000. I think I'm going to do a big giveaway for 20,000. So some of the things that I've got that I've been testing and uh, no longer use, I'm going to give away a nice big electric package of all these smart goodies. And Lumery, great company. I, I do feel like I've got a good relationship with them now. They're keen to be on board. So they've sent me one of these to be included um, in that giveaway as well. So uh, yeah, if there are other suppliers out there that would like me to review their products and include in a giveaway, get in touch. And the same for EcoFlow as well. I've given my EcoFlow Delta battery over to my brother and that felt really good sharing and letting him have that and seeing what he can do with his portable battery. He's using the small one as a UPS and he's using the bigger one for more portable requirements. And uh, I just wasn't using it as much so it's nice to have it used. But it felt good giving it away. It felt good sharing. So I think I should do that. 20,000 subscribers, going to do a big giveaway. Clear the cupboards of all these things that I'm not using anymore and uh, share some of the free products that are coming along for me to review as well, like this Lumery Smart Light. So I've got a couple to give away now. I've got the smaller uh, 24 watt Lumery Smart Light. I've got some recessed smart ceiling lights from Lumery Smart and now one of these larger ones as well. I'm not sure whether I'll be able to give away the Shelly Smart relay switches that I've got on there, but maybe I'll build a package of those sort of things in as well, and some CASA products as well. So I don't, I don't know what I can accumulate by the time that we actually make 20,000, but it just sounds like a good thing to do, doesn't it? Give things away. So thanks again. Take care. See you again soon for more videos. Home storage, batteries, electric cars, solar panels, all that great stuff, and smart automation, smart products. I do want to do a video on my home automation and what I'm doing with that, because I'm starting to get into it just a little bit more. I'm starting to play around with automation now, turning things on and off automatically. And some of the things are not quite what you'd think, you know, not lights, but turning the eddy off. So I'm starting to work out when I get my Mixergy tank to a certain level, then I've got plenty of hot water. So turn the eddy off so it doesn't use solar anymore. And then that will help switch across the solar to charge through the zappy. So there's quite a few things that I might experiment with and uh, try to use the automation of Home Assistant to help prioritize what we're doing here with our solar energy. Anyway, more of that to come. Take care. See you again soon for more videos. Bye for now.